We're at the very end of a console generation. This is a particularly interesting time because first-party developers who spent years learning the ins and outs of the hardware can finally deliver on many of the promises made at the start of the generation. Take the 7th gen. Way back in 2005, there was the infamous Killzone 2 trailer that looked nothing like the shipping game. But after years and years of development, we got titles like The Last of Us and Halo 4 that same generation delivering exactly those kind of visuals. Death Stranding arrived out on the PS4 and PS4 Pro. It's expected to release on PC in 2020. By the time the PC releases out, we'll be just months away from the arrival of the PS5, a generational shift that promises to be at least as radical as the PS3 was. It's the fourth major outing for the Decima engine, a platform that showcased Killzone Shadowfall, PS4's first graphical tour de force, and later played host to the stunning Horizon Zero Dawn. Following their partnership, Kojima had the pick of Sony's in-house tech to implement in Death Stranding. It wasn't a surprise that he picked Decima. Although they're very different games, Horizon Zero Dawn fulfills many of the same technical goals Kojima had in mind for Death Stranding. Whether it's the excellent character rendering, wide vistas, or post-processing effects, the game is Decima's last outing on 8th gen hardware. It's easy to see that Kojima and co have done everything possible to make it shine on the PS4 and the Pro. Let's take a deep dive to find out how. Great character rendering and okay texture work. As a Kojima game, Death Stranding just wouldn't be the real thing if it didn't have an excessive dose of cutscenes and character close-ups. For these to work, it's crucial that character rendering is as good as possible. Apart from subsurface scattering for the skin, eye rendering in Death Stranding plays a huge role in getting us past the uncanny valley. Similar to Gears 5, and a step forward from earlier efforts, Character eyes and the immediate area around them look surprisingly lifelike. High quality materials bring characters alive. Material rendering on the surface is more true to life, while the high polygon budget allows for fine detail to be modeled around the eye. Kojima lavishes attention, and rendering budgets to characters and character close-ups in Death Stranding frequently give us evidence of this. Models look organic, with a combination of high polygon counts and tessellation ironing out any corners. Excellent TAA coverage, but at the cost of fidelity. Hair rendering is superb, and the temporal anti-aliasing in use prevents unsightly shimmer on the hair. What bothers us, though, with the game is the so-so texture quality. Part of this is down to the use of temporal AA, this isn't the strongest TAA blur we've seen in a game, but Death Stranding does lose some amounts of high-frequency detail on account of it. Texture detail is also a bit lacking. Environmental textures take a hit. Characters receive plenty of attention, but environmental textures aren't always as sharp as they could be. This is evident when looking at flooring and road surfaces. Also, we have what appears to be four times anisotropic filtering. This again contributes to blurry textures in the open world, especially in the background. We suspect this has to do with memory limitations on both the PS4 and PS4 Pro. The Pro only gives developers an extra 512 megabytes of VRAM to work with, despite the need to output far more pixels. A disparity in texture resolution is something we've noticed between the Pro and the Xbox One X, which has a 12 gigabyte pool of memory. Crisp 1080p on the base PS4, an excellent 4K checkerboarding on the PS4 Pro. Talking about resolution, it's a good idea to briefly touch on Death Stranding rendering output. On the PS4, we have a crisp native 1080p. Backed by the strong TAA solution, it looks great on standard Full HD panels. With the Pro, we move to a checkerboard rendering at 3840 by 2160. Temporal reconstruction's been a bit of a mixed bag over the years. There are lots of poor implementations. Over in the PC space, NVIDIA's DLSS, despite using AI, often offers a worse reconstructed image than a simple upscale. Decima's checkerboard rendering is one of the best implementations we've seen there. Yes, there are checkerboarding artifacts that may appear on certain surfaces like hair, 
and the perceptual resolution drops a bit in motion, but moment to moment it's very hard to tell apart from a native 4K presentation. Sam Porter, I presume? Right. Not the touchy-feely type. Takuma said you had some kind of phobia. Bridges' corpse disposal? What happened? Look, gotta get a move on. I'll explain as we go. Come on. Come and take a look. He's got a date with the incinerator. How long since he flatlined? We don't know the exact TOD, but I'd say it's been upwards of 40 hours. He wasn't quarantined. Not sick. This is a suicide. Oh, Jesus. We're just lucky we found him at all. Got him on ice ASAP, but who knows when he'll go necro. Where are you taking him? Uh, closest incinerators to the north. This route's crawling with BTs. Sure you can't use another? I wish I could, but there's no time. Then just burn the poor bastard right here. You put all that Kyrillium in the air so close to town? Can't do it. Better that than trying for the incinerator. Hey, we can do this. We just need someone like you with dooms. Stages of necrosis. If we don't hurry, this place is a crater. So how about it? Can we count on you? Then Bridges hereby enters into a contract with Sam Porter. Sam. Cinematic post-processing pipeline It'd be an understatement to say that Kojima has a flair for the cinematic. Anyone who's sat through Metal Gear Solid 4's hours of cutscenes knows full well that this is a developer who'd stuff entire movies into his games if it were feasible. With Death Stranding, Kojima hasn't strayed from expectations on this front. There are numerous cutscenes that make full use of Decima's post-processing pipeline to great cinematic effect. In an early opening cutscene that pans close to a character's face, you can see multiple post-process effects deployed simultaneously. Bloom is used to emphasize emissive light sources. Meanwhile, a shallow dynamic depth of field blur is used to bring focus to characters' faces. We can see Decima's excellent temporal anti-aliasing make a return here. Gorilla's TAA implementation in Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the best in the business, offering thorough coverage and temporal stability without compromising on sharpness. This is brought back here and helps minimize shimmering, even on high-frequency details like hair. The game features ambient occlusion too, but the effect isn't as pronounced as it is in other Decima games. We have a feeling that this has to do with the time of day and weather factors. Death Stranding takes place in a perpetually cloudy environment. Shadows, both direct and indirect, are diffuse in this situation. We see both per object and camera blur as well. The former is most easily visible in up-close action scenes. It's a fairly high-quality implementation with little in the way of banding. You can observe per motion blur during gameplay too. It's most readily seen around your feet when sprinting. As this is a 30 FPS title, quality motion blur plays a big role in conveying perceptual smoothness. 
a varied suite of high-quality shaders. Death Stranding makes great use of a wide range of shader effects. In cutscenes, subsurface scattering is seen on characters' skin, lending it a smoothness that prevents characters from adopting a wax doll look. Tessellation is apparently in place as well, and evident in the snowdrifts piling up. As your character moves through the snow, you can see snow piling up on the sides. Tessellation in the game works concurrently with parallax occlusion mapping too. Often, games adopt an either-or approach to these two technologies, since they're assumed to broadly do the same thing. But in Death Stranding, we see different uses for each of them. In cases like snowdrifts, where volume is an important part of the visual, tessellation is implemented since it creates real geometry that deforms where appropriate. In other cases, as with the terrain, we see parallax occlusion mapping being used to create the illusion of depth at certain angles. You get decent water rendering, too. The water shader provides for caustics. Moving around in a river, for instance, will also cause the water to move some. Screen space reflections are in place and are of a fairly high quality. You see them both on water and the many wet, dank surfaces around the game. Conclusion Kojima at his best, backed by solid Guerrilla Tech. After Kojima and Konami parted ways, the biggest question was not so much would there be a new game produced by the auteur, but rather what platform he'd build it on. A long-standing relationship with Sony and a healthy partnership with Guerrilla Games ensured that Death Stranding was realized on Decima, an engine almost tailor-made for its particular vision of the post-apocalypse. This is a great-looking title and a solid benchmark against which launch-era PS5 titles should be compared. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily, so make sure you don't miss them by subscribing. We appreciate your support, and we thank you for checking us out.